Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a telephone call from Sultan Haytham bin Tariq Al Said of Oman. They exchanged Eid al Fitr good wishes and wished both countries and people, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, many happy returns. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of, Olympic, of the Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the eighth meeting of the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, which was held through virtual communication technology and was attended by all members of the Board of Directors. During the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa welcomed the members, praising the efforts made by the Board of Directors and the executive body to advance the sports movement. His Highness expressed congratulations to the wise leadership and congratulated the members of the Board of Directors and the Sports Family on the advent of the blessed Eid al-Fitr, wishing the Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns. After that, the meeting discussed the items on the agenda and the Secretary General of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Mohammed Hassan al Nasif gave a brief presentation of the developments of administrative and financial matters in the Olympic Committee and the latest developments in the project of developing the National Center for Sports Medicine and Rehabilitation and reviewed the list of athletes benefiting from the Olympic Solidarity Program. He also briefed His Highness and the Board of Directors on the precautionary measures taken by the Olympic Committee to deal with the coronavirus COVID-19 on the employees, sports federations and other initiatives undertaken by the Olympic Committee in support of the efforts of the Bahrain national team. The Minister of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning, Isam bin Abdullah Khalaf, revealed the start of preparation or preparing lands designated for investment in fish farming in the Ras Hayyan area, where the first phase is being prepared to accommodate five investment companies. The minister explained during the field visit that he took to look, he took to look closely at work in the center of the fish incubators that was launched at the beginning of this month to embrace 10 entrepreneurs and to be a starting point for building 10 fish farms by floating cages in the month of September. 2020, indicating that the ministry is working on a national strategy to produce 20% of fish through marine agriculture programs. He also directed to continue the gradual increase in fish fingerlings uh, to meet the requirements of the local market, especially with the increase in the pace of the private sector's tendency to establish farms using modern technologies and benefit from national programs of cooperation with the World Food and Agriculture Organization. He noted that work on implementing the strategic plan for developing fish farming continues in the industry by building a number of fish farms that rely on intensive production technology and investment plots which will be provided to private sector companies working in the field of fish production stressing that this visit comes to the see the land settlement programs and the provision of infrastructure that will be a starting point for raising national fish production with sizes ranging from 3,000 to 6,000 square meters in Ras Hayyan. The Secretary General of the Supreme Judicial Council revealed the activation of the first remote trial, which took place today at the Second High Criminal Court of Appeal, presided by Judge Ibrahim Salman al Jaffin held a remote court hearing. The Secretary General stated that the criminal court started their work remotely today with full readiness in accordance with the standards of a fair trial by allocating a trial room in Joe region, equipping it with audiovisual technologies and linking it with modern technologies in criminal courts. In in order to initiate remote litigation and ensure courts continue to operate efficiently amid the current circumstances. It also added the aim is to speed up the litigation procedures and reduce their duration while achieving judicial guarantees in addition to the preventative measures to preserve the safety and health of the defendants through social distancing in light of the spread of the coronavirus. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus COVID-19 cases reached 4,312 with 3,715 recoveries and 151 registered new cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis, along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible.
In our international news, Saudi Arabia has recorded a steady increase of 2,691 new coronavirus cases, raising the total to 62,545. A Ministry of Health spokesman said 10 people who had previously tested positive for the virus have died, raising the kingdom's relatively low death toll to 339. Saudi Arabia continues to expand its testing efforts with 18,094 new screenings conducted over the past 24 hours. The kingdom has so far administrated 636,170 according to the health ministry. Despite an increase in daily confirmed infections, the number of recoveries continues to grow as well, with 1,844 new recoveries. A total of 33,478 individuals have recovered so far in the kingdom. The World Health Organization warned against the use of the malaria drug hydroxychloroquine to tackle COVID-19, saying the drug had yet to be found effective in both the treatment and prophylaxis of the disease. The executive director of the WHO Health Emergencies Program said warnings had been issued by many authorities regarding the potential side effects of the drug, and many countries had limited its use to that of clinical trials or during clinical trial. As the migrant workers and other people stranded in India cities uh, continue to make uh, their way to their hometowns, rally or railway stations have become crowded as people line up to wait for their trains. In Mumbai, thousands waited for trains outside the railway station wearing masks and carrying huge bags of luggage. Tens of thousands of migrant laborers have been returning from big cities to their villages after losing jobs because of a countrywide lockdown imposed in late March to contain the spread of the coronavirus. India's health ministry, however, has once again and lauded the lockdown for helping keep the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths relatively low in comparison to other countries like the U.S. and Spain. As some restrictions are lifted and controlled movements of people allowed across states, officials have asked people to be extra careful in the weeks to come. Russia's coronavirus uh, caseload has surpassed 300,000, with a death toll almost reaching 3,000. The country's health officials reported 8,764 new infections and 135 new deaths, the highest daily spike in mortality. The country registered the lowest increase of new coronavirus cases during the last three days, where it is the first day when the number of discharged patients is bigger than the number of those who got sick. 17 Russian regions are ready to start lifting quarantine restrictions. The French health minister Olivier Véran said that uh, 10 days after France relaxed its coronavirus lockdown, there has been no increase in the daily rate of new infections. He said the number of COVID-19 patients being admitted to hospitals each day was decreasing, as well as the number of people being treated in intensive care units. But he warned this didn't mean the virus had disappeared. New clusters of COVID-19 cases have been recently discovered among slaughterhouse workers in western France and police officials in northern France. Véran also promised that health workers in hospitals and nursing homes will see a salary increase as part of a new government plan for the public health system. French President Emmanuel Macron announced the plan last week during the visit of a Paris hospital. A powerful cyclone slammed ashore along the coastline of India and Bangladesh, where more than 2.6 million people fled to shelters in a frantic evacuation made all the more challenging by the coronavirus pandemic. Cyclone Amphan, the equivalent of a Category 3 hurricane, packed winds of up to 170 kilometers per hour and maximum gusts of 190 kilometers per hour. Authorities warned it could cause extensive damage to flimsy houses and a storm surge could push seawater 25 kilometers inland flooding cities including Kolkata. The densely populated region has some of the most vulnerable communities in South Asia. Bo poor fishing communities in the uh, Sunderbans and over a million Rohingya refugees living in crowded camps in Cox's Bazar in Bangladesh. The head of emergencies at the World Health Organization and said at, an, uh, at the end of the U.S. funding for the U.N. Health Agency will have a major implication for delivering essential health services to the most vulnerable people in the world. Dr. Michael Ryan was responding to questions from reporters about a letter sent by U.S. President Donald Trump to the WHO's chief threatening an end to funding from the United States, which its biggest donor, unless the agency reforms. The comments came on a day when a total of 106,000 COVID-19 cases were reported to the WHO over the last 24 hours, the most in a single day since the outbreak began. Ryan said the U.S. funding that reaches WHO emergencies program was on the order of $100 million a year, and much goes to humanitarian health operations all over the world in all sorts of fragile and difficult settings.